Right now, we are very excited to be joined by Dirk Allborn of Hyperloop Transportation Technologies. Dirk, hello. Hello, how are you guys doing? Doing great, thanks so much for taking some time to hop in here right now. I am just seeing the poster behind you. That is amazing already. Uh, what is that from? Like what, is that from an actual uh, issue? Yeah, this was actually the first uh, popular science cover that we got. That is so great. I kind of want that for myself. Uh, so, so Dirk, why don't we walk through this here and you know, do kind of the basic question when it comes to Hyperloop. I think for some people, there's still confusion on it. Can you walk us through what exactly your definition of Hyperloop is and why you think this is an important uh, technology going forward? Sure, so Hyperloop is um, a new mode of transportation. They call it the fifth mode of transportation. Um, basically, imagine a capsule filled with people afraid that um, moves close to the speed of sound inside a tube. And inside the tube, we're creating uh, a low pressure environment so that the capsule can go really fast with very little energy. So on one hand, it's about moving people very fast. And on the other hand, it's about solving the big issue that um, you know, trains, metros today actually don't make economic sense. So they're all relying heavily on government subsidies. The Hyperloop, because we're producing our own energy uh, along the track with solar panels, wind, kinetic energy, and because we are consuming very little and we have low, very low operational cost, can be profitable in a very short time frame. So that's really, you know, I want to say the, the the fast explanation, but it doesn't matter if it goes inside a tunnel or inside a tube above the ground. That's more something um, that is defined based on the route, right? Sometimes you're going to have to tunnel, and sometimes it makes more sense to be outside. Right, and so that, and that does, you know, that does kind of explain that. It's just as, since it since it depends on where you're going to be going from. And let's talk about Hyperloop. Now, you guys have been. Um, you know, very uh, aggressive in making announcements and saying, you know, we're going to be going here, we're launching test tracks here. Where is Hyperloop Transportation Technologies at right now as far as when could we see this implemented? So, yeah, you, I mean, of course, you're right. We have been um, very active. So we have uh, several deals around the world. We have two commercial projects right now. One is in the Emirates in Abu Dhabi and the other one is in China. And um, we just uh, um, presented the world's first passenger capsule, which was presented uh, earlier this year in Spain, um, together with our partner Artificial. And that's kind of like building an airplane. So, you know, it's uh, the fuselage that now is going to Toulouse to our R&D center for assembly and integration into the system. Um, we are working in Abu Dhabi now on uh, the whole design and planning process. So we expect to break ground there later next year. So, you know, things are moving. Um, the technology is a technology that has been around for quite some time. So it's not really that you have to reinvent things. Mm -hmm. But there's a big hurdle and that's governmental uh, support, governmental approval. So we have to create a new set of laws and regulations. And uh, that's the reason why we are working with so many governments around the world. And, um, you know, we're proposing our framework together with TÜVSUIT, which is one of the leading safety institutes. We have been working with the largest reinsurance company in the world to make sure the technology is insurable, which is a very important step when it goes to commercialization. So. There's a lot of work that um, goes into making sure that you're actually able to build something that can be commercially used, right? It's a completely new system. It's not a train and it's not a plane. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. There's a, that's a lot to, to overcome when it comes down to it. I mean, personally, I'll say this. I'm very, very excited about this idea of transportation. I mean, I'm, I love technology and I love this idea of kind of rethinking and um, rethinking just how we get around everywhere. But talking about those obstacles, you did bring up the government issues, which is true. That's a whole new set of laws and legal systems that are going to have to be figured out for this. But what about as far as um, consumer adoption? Do you think this is something that people are going to adopt right away, or is it going to take more education about it? Um, where do you think that part is going to play into it? Yeah, I think that um, you're completely right. I mean, the exciting thing about it is that you're able to rethink everything, right? So mm -hmm. we, we have the unique opportunity to build a transportation system the way you would do in 2019. So how would that look? Because what we have today, um, I don't think really works, right? If you, when you take a bus, when you take a train, even when you take a cab um, or a plane. I mean, I'm going to be on a plane later for 14 hours and, you know, yeah. I'm not 
looking forward to it. So um, from the user experience itself, it's actually going to be very similar to what you already know. So, um, you know, a plane already moves almost at the speed of sound. So, um, you know, you're somewhere around uh, 500, 600 miles per hour, depending on where, like, which plane you're flying. So it's, um, we're already used to it. It's not something really new. And um, when you're building something like this, of course, you have to make it something that works for a two-year-old as much as for an 80-year-old. So yeah. the experience is not going to be, um, you know, a thrill or a roller coaster ride. It's actually something, if you want, so fairly boring, but that moves you from one place to the other. And ideally, we're creating uh, a much better passenger experience. That's really the goal. So to start off with, would the idea be more just to cover long distances really quick? This wouldn't be like a commuter system in a, in a city, or would it be more, because I've, I've heard different, you know, different theories, like you could build one from San Francisco to LA, and I think it was like a 30 minute ride, and correct me if I'm wrong on that, something like that, in theory, if you could build a, a tube like that. Like, is that more what you envision? So, yeah, well, I mean, it would be 36 minutes, uh, LA, San Francisco. I knew and you'd know. <laughs> I think that it would be amazing. Yeah. In general, again, it goes back to what the problem that we're solving. Um, it's not only about speed. Of course, when you're thinking about speed, it's about longer distances because you need to be able to go fairly straight for a very long time in order to get really up to speed. But um, the system makes more economic sense. It makes more economic sense than a subway, for example. So, of course, um, there are applications where much shorter routes make a lot of sense. So there's somehow, there's somewhat like an, uh, a maximum limit to it. So when you're, um, I mean, it's not going to be San Francisco to New York, for example, unless you're building several routes in between. It just doesn't make a lot of sense from the economics because, you know, building still costs uh, a lot. And there's a lot of developments for supersonic flights. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait for those. Um, so airlines, airplanes are still going to make more sense on the much longer routes. But when it comes to yeah, shorter commute somewhere, something in between um, 500 miles to maybe a thousand, um, the Hyperloop definitely is you know filling a void that today isn't there. Because if I want to go to San Francisco right now, it doesn't take me 36 minutes. It doesn't even take me an hour and a half. It actually takes me probably more around four hours, right? Was getting to the airport, uh, waiting, checking in, waiting for my plane, getting on the plane, taking off, going over there, landing on everything that's, uh, that yeah. has to do with that. So that's, you know, uh, that's kind of where it, fit in, it fits in. So the real problem we're solving is more an economical problem, which is maybe a little bit more boring for most people because the general public is more excited about moving at the speed right. of sound. But um, it, that's the reason why you're hearing different types of applications. I mean, that, and you're right. Like this, the speed is kind of the flashy part of it, but all of that, all of that back channel stuff that has to go on to make this happen. Well, I mean, with that, let me just ask you this: like, how long do you think it is until we see widespread adoption of this kind of technology? So, as I mentioned earlier, we plan on building, uh, starting construction n next year for the first commercial lines. Um, and that's going to be in the UAE, was that it? Yeah, UAE and China are now um, signed uh, commercial agreements. And um, so we plan to have one of the first phases in the UAE done by hopefully 2020. Um, after that, you know, you and me, we can take the Hyperloop. You're going to have to sign a waiver. <laughs> but um, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer until we have the ability to, you know, again, we need those new laws and regulations. So it's going to still take a little while until you have widespread adoption, because that's really the important part, right? Creating these new laws and regulations. And uh, luckily, we have many countries, many governments that are supporting us. It's also important that you work almost with as many as possible, right? Because mm -hmm. governments change, they, they change their mind. Yeah. But it's change. So it's, it's a fairly uh, long process. So in these two commercial deals that we have in China and in the Emirates, we also made sure that they support us with the creation of uh, these regulations. And uh, we have presented the guidelines for the regulations to our partners. There's going to be some time to get you know, safety records, to uh, make sure everything is safe, everything's working. And then, of course, you're going to have a slow rollout, right? So you're not going to move at full speed right from the beginning, but it, it so it takes a little bit of time. I think we um, we probably talk at least another decade until widespread adoption. And hopefully, you know, 
um, the U.S. is very attentive. So there's a lot of different projects uh, in the U.S. that we're following, and we're doing one project, for example, um, from Cleveland to Chicago, where we're already done or well, almost done with a feasibility study. So, you know, it's it's really getting these governments on board and working together with them and make sure that we are able to roll out a safe system and uh, as soon as possible. That's, I mean, I would love that idea of, of instituting one from Cleveland to Chicago. I think that'd be great. Uh, but just the fact that you have this set up now, you know, you said UAE and China probably gives you a good blueprint to hopefully say, look, here's how it can work. Here's where the, the regulations, here's the safety issues that we have. So then you can take that to other governments and just be like, boom, we've already done it. Um, I will say this. Yes, if you want me to come out and sign a waiver, I will definitely ride in your hyper, in the Hyperloop uh, once that one gets set up. I would love to. Uh, but Dirk, thank you so much for hopping on here today, too. And where can people follow along? What's the best way uh, to follow along with everything that Hyperloop Transportation Technologies is doing? Um, well, of course, there's, um, you know, the different, the different social channels from uh, Facebook uh, on the Hyperloop Transportation Technologies um, page or Instagram on the Hyperloop TT and, uh, you know, me and my partner Bebop, we have our personal ones where we post things when we're traveling around. So, and if not, just uh, send an email. Okay, fantastic. Well, Dirk, thank you so much for hopping on here today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having us.